just to reinforce, shotcrete is high velocity placement. We're talking 60 to 80 miles per hour velocity impact. That gives us consolidation on a vertical or overhead surface and full encasement of reinforcing steel. And it's not a product, it's a method of placing concrete. If you had a steel design that's number six bars at six inches, it's gonna be number six bars at six inches when you're using shotcrete placement. Fire resistance the same. History, we're over 100 years old. We actually started in 1907. The original concrete mixture was just sand and cement. And in those days, 1907 was before ready mix trucks. I mean, ready mix didn't start until 1914. So shotcrete actually was a way to do higher strength quality shotcrete. But if you look at this picture in the lower left, I can walk up and tell you that that is bad placement technique. There are a lot of issues with that. We've learned over the decades what we need to do to get high quality placement uh, so that we can do things like Stadia talked about where it's, what was it, one and a half meters thick, uh, heavy reinforcing steel. Uh, we've really made advances. Here you can see some shots in the 50s. Uh, once again, this is predominantly dry mix. Some of you may heard the term gunite. That's the old trade name for what we now call dry mix shock. And we've been using shotcrete for a long time for architectural types of shells. Uh, thin shell design like this is not as popular as it used to be, but you can see uh, this was down in Mexico City. And here you can see a nozzleman. Obviously, OSHA was not quite the uh, force they were when he's shooting this dome. But we have a long history using shotcrete. Here you can see dry mix today. We have different guns. We've refined that. We're using a lot of pre bag Prepackaged materials, very sophisticated, where you can have air and training, fibers, corrosion inhibitors, silica fume, uh, fly ash. Uh, but we basically have a gun that's pushing concrete materials through and then adding at the water at the nozzle. Uh, the other that we talked about, which was predominantly in the pre previous presentation, was wet mix, where we take ready mix concrete, we pump it through a hose, and we add air at the nozzle to give it velocity. In the 60s, ACI adopted the terms wet mix and dry mix. But we are very mobile. If you see this picture in the upper left, this is our production. We can come in with a pump. We have their, they have their scaffold. There's the air compressor. They have hoses. Very mobile, very equipment uh, light to come in and do structural concrete placement with shotcrete. I get a lot of questions, dry or wet done with the proper materials, equipment, and placement techniques, both will produce equal quality, high strength, low permeability, long durability concrete. Getting into architectural finishes. Uh, we can go from a gun finish like this, where maybe it's not exposed to view, it's gonna be backfilled, hey, that, that works good. Or we can get all the way down and spend money and do a carving like this. Uh, if it is a wall, the, the architect is okay with. Uh, we can do a rod finish that has some, some little nooks and crannies because of the rock hitting and leaving some craters. Uh, but this is predominantly used, generally if it's not gonna be exposed to view. When we are talking about exposed to view, we'll have a float finish or steel trowel finish like this. We don't like the steel trowel finish because it, how do you get that gloss? You get the gloss because you have raised water to the surface. You've increased the water cement ratio. It means it's weaker, more permeable. It's not going to have the strength long term for exposure to the elements. So we like a float finish, very similar to what you might get in your plaster wall in the house. Here you can see, uh, and this there was no form, right? We shot it, we finished it. There's no bug holes. There's no form fins that you have to grind off. Uh, we can get very nice uniform textures with that shotcrete finish. Pools, you know, pools used to be what? A rectangular concrete pond, <laughs> a hole in the ground. Nowadays we have uh, this pool in the upper left. You can see the curvature. There's no straight lines in there. They have coves down at the bottom. Uh, we have infinity edges where the water goes away to, it just looks like the water's going out to infinity. Those have to be a very tight tolerance. We, over the last several decades, have learned how to do very tight tolerances. And that's important, uh, not only from the structural perspective, but also architectural. Um, where once upon a time, ACI 117 said, well, shotcrete can only, you have to multiply 
cast and place tolerances by two, we can actually do better than 117 tolerances. Takes more time and effort, but we can do that. Uh, here you can see architectural in, in some way. This is a, um, you can see the polar bear here on the, <laughs> sitting on the deck. This is a polar bear exhibit. This is all concrete high strength, durable concrete that was carved and colored to look like rock. We mentioned tight tolerances. Uh, here, this is the bobsled run for the Winter Olympics in Lake Placid. Shotcrete's been used to build these. And why shotcrete? Well, you can see there's nothing straight and we have to maintain very, very tight tolerances. Shotcrete's been used Lake Placid, Salt Lake City, Vancouver, uh, South Korea, and in the upcoming China. Olympics, all those have used shotcrete placement. Skate parks, I don't know if any of you are skaters, but you don't want humps and bumps and wobbles. You want nice, smooth radiuses. Uh, and we can do that full 360, that full pipe, uh, because we can shoot not only vertical, but overhead. And if you really want artistic, uh, here, these were actually limestone originally, uh, acid rain deteriorate them. This is up in Canada. And they came in and did it with shotcrete. Here you can see a carved wall. Um, we can do just kind of forming it or carving in some grooves. If you're on a freeway driving by 80 miles an hour, it probably looks like natural rock. Or you can see this picture on the lower left where they've actually come in and colored it. They give it some more texture. Uh, we can do so many things with shotcrete because we have that fresh concrete surface that we can work with. Um, we can do curves. Once again, we're doing very light forms. This is a masonite. This is an eighth of an inch form. All we're doing is defining the back surface. We can shoot against form liners. So we can get something like this, like an old barn wood, or here where we have relief. Uh, this was actually on the form we shot against that. This is interesting. We had a landscape architect who had the curve wall. He said, yeah, I want a curve wall. Contractor said, well, we'll do it in shot creek. I can save you some time and money. Uh, he, oh, well, I really like those form tie holes. So he came in and you can see this plywood form, this template up in the upper left. They actually carved out the form tie holes, but just shows our shotcrete contractors can be creative if need be. Here you can see a full pipe on a skate park. Uh, on the left, this is a water feature where they're going to have a fountain that spills over. Once again, tight tolerances. You've got to maintain a very uniform elevation so all the water is not going over in one place. Uh, here you can see some landscape features. Once again, easy to come do with shotcrete. Here's a water feature. And I'm running through these pretty fast because I want to get to some of the case studies and not take all the time away from Jim Cornell later. <laughs> uh, but this is curved tight tolerances on the elevation. And one of the really cool things we can do is we don't have to shoot the entire wall at one time. We can shoot out the wall to within the last inch. And then in this case, they've used white cement. So we pay the high price for white cement only in the last inch of the wall. The rest of it can be the old gray, good strength, good durable concrete but providing that architectural color just in the last layer that's shot. Here you can see an architectural. This is actually, you can see the taper in the wall. This was formed up and these were actually put on the form, shot against and then just stripped away to give this architectural feature. Uh, we can do building retrofits. I talked about these before. Um, and this is in some ways architectural because we're, we're preserving the history, right? This is actually a brick facade. Didn't meet current standards for seismic and wind loads. So we come in and build a structural concrete wall in place. No formwork needed. We can put up the resteel. We can tie it into the brick. We shoot it. If they have to keep the building in operation, we can actually segment off pieces of the building and do the reconstruction uh, in, in pieces. And this is the uh, experience music building in Seattle, Washington. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen this before. It's a Geary project. Uh, and they use shotcrete to build all this freeform structure. And then what did they do? They came in and put some cladding on top of it. So the red and the gold that you see, this is just metal cladding that's installed on standoffs off the structural shotcrete that's providing the support. 
But you can imagine, I don't know if any of you have been involved in construction. I know, Mon, you have, but trying to form both sides of a wall like this and cast some of these steep slopes have been very, very difficult. I don't know if anybody's from Chicago. Um, Aman, I know you are. Yes. I don't know if you followed the Lucas Museum project. Yes, yes, we almost built it. <laughs> and uh, we actually, uh, when they first came to us, they had seen that experience of music. They said, hey, can we do that? And we'll put, we're going to put like a marble tile panel on top of it. We taught, they, they brought in ASA, talk about Shockrete, a couple of our contractors. We said, hey, we can do it in Shockrete and we can use white cement. We can use special aggregate. We can do a shape like this in shotcrete, and you're going to have durable concrete that that looks like a very you know there's there's nothing straight about this. It's all double curved. We actually shot mock-up panels. One of my contractors shot a mock-up panel, and George Lucas came in, and there was a precast that they actually did some curved precast against the shotcrete. He selected the shotcrete. Unfortunately. The uh, friends of the parking lot at Soldier Field uh, protested and didn't want their parking lot took away, taken away. So Lucas has gone to Los Angeles uh, to build his museum. Unfortunately, this would have been a, just a landmark project for us as Shockcrete uh, architecturally. This is the Bing Stanford Hall, Stanford University. Bing Concert Hall in Stanford University. It's a truncated cone. It was originally going to be a steel structure with uh, cladding and then some marble tile or, or some kinds of panels. Shot Creek contractor was called in to do the foundation and he said, hey, you know, I can do, I can do this. We can put in some joints, you can color it. You're gonna have more durability, you're gonna save money and that's what they did. Uh, here you can see the project lit up, nice uh, lighting. Uh, this is an interesting project. This was a band shell, just to give you an idea of the perspective. This is what they look like. This is a, a seating area on one side and then the full band shells on the other. But the architect was working with an acoustic engineer. So they actually modeled, you can see the double curved shapes. They modeled it to be able to have the proper acoustics. So they were very, very concerned about the surface profile. So you can see what they've done. They've shot out to about that last inch. It was in the UK, so it was probably 25 millimeters. Uh, it's rough. We can then shoot the final coat and be able to get good bond and take time in finishing. They actually laser scanned during placement so that they got the, the shape, the final shape that they wanted for the acoustics. Pretty cool project. This is a recent project. This won one of our outstanding project awards uh, this year for ASA. Uh, this is down in Fort Lauderdale. And all of this is shotcrete. It's a post-tension slab on the top uh, with these flared columns. And this, once again, we're doing structural concrete placement. They're gonna have high durability. It's right on the ocean, so they had used uh, some more cover, and I believe it had epoxy coated steel. But shotcrete allows an architect to do things without those flat surfaces. They can think more in curves. And we're seeing more and more architects like that. This is in the Middle East. This is actually a, this is all shotcrete. Uh, this is made for a golf resort or a golf course. Um, they wanted something that kind of blended in that looked like the natural hills. Uh, around the golf course. And so all this building is actually shot created in place. This is a, a company that is one of our members. They do big inflatable domes for dry material storage, but they also said, hey, we're gonna have a headquarters. Let's, let's build it as a dome. So they came in. This is a shotcrete dome, uh, has large cutouts, and then they have the glass curtain walls that they put in. And one of the cool things here was because it was shotcrete, they did the first layers. You can see the reinforcing steel. This is an underside view. They did the reinforcing steel and then they put in heating and cooling. This is basically pipes so they can heat and cool their building from the concrete surface. This is like kind of having a heated driveway or maybe a heated floor. This, this entire dome is used for heating and cooling uh, their, their office building. And this is a uh, this is a speakeasy in the New York area. 
the owner of a restaurant up above wanted to create this kind of unique underground place for special VIP clients that came in. So they excavated, they stabilized everything with shotcrete, they built the walls here. Everything that you see here surface-wise is shotcrete. Floor was cast, it's polished concrete. Uh, we don't typically shoot floors, usually vertical overhead is where we have the strength uh, when we're using shotcrete placement. Uh, this is a project that this is during construction. It's actually just been opened. It's the uh, Academy of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles, the uh, Griffin Theater. It's curved. That would be so difficult to come in with formwork. Uh, we were able to do it in Shotcrete. This is once again one of our outstanding project awards. And talk about sustainability. Why, why is Shotcrete inherently more sta uh, sustainable? We reduce formwork. I talked my previous presentation, often we didn't have any formwork. If we are doing standalone walls, it'll be a light form on one side. We can do efficient sections. We can do a continuous taper from thick to thin at the top. Easy to do in Shotcrete, smaller equipment, flexible access, gives us time savings, usually means less expensive on the job. Uh, and if we're doing repairs uh, or multiple layers, we get better bond, more durable concrete place, uh, placement. And I've shown you, I think, some of the creative things we can do. Um, we'll talk a little, I already talked about Nozzleman certification. So in the interest of time, we'll just go by. Uh, we do have a Shotcrete inspector certification program. If you have a large project, uh, a lot of inspectors know concrete, but they don't know Shotcrete. We give them 40, in our education, 40 different visual clues on what's important to recognize quality Shotcrete going in place. And I already talked about uh, using qualified contractors. And that's the end. I